Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Lauren Cooper. Thanks for joining me on the channel. Uh, so on the last video that I did about the ME90, I was very impressed about how it handled itself live with such short time to sort of fiddle with the knobs. And I'm gonna get into some stuff about, you know, really demonstrating all the different sounds. But I've been getting a recurring question in the comments about, you know, um, losing presets, or not the presets, but when you sort of find your tone in manual mode, you turn off the machine, you turn it back on, it's completely different. I had that same uh, issue when I was first going through the unit where uh, the volumes were jumping and the levels were all over the place, just like this. Pretty cool. So there's that. Let's get an overdrive sound. So uh, in the ME50, I really dig the, um, just the natural, it's called natural. Um, so it's sort of like more of a boost than a drive or a very natural breakup. Uh, let's see if I can get something similar to this. So it, there is a boost. Wow. The volume jumps. I don't know if there's um, I don't know if there's some sort of parameter that I need to work on in terms of like a global volume. So it turns out that there's a setting inside the ME90 where it automatically from the factory um, every time you press a, an effect it leaves off where the preset uh, is saved and so the volumes and the levels will be all wacky. So basically what I found was that there's a global preset to turn it off preset mode and to turn it to manual mode, which means every time you turn the unit off, uh, the knobs are gonna be left where you left them. It's not gonna automatically reset to what the preset was and then you're just messing within the preset, which I find to be pretty annoying. So when you actually look at the unit itself and you turn it on, okay, you turn the power on, press that button, it goes into user or preset mode, but automatically when I turn it on, it's blue. Before, when I automatically got it, uh, for, took it out of the box and I turned it on, it went to red, which means it was automatically in preset mode and things were all screwed up. So I like to use it more as a pedal board and then I can go ahead and save the sounds as my own presets, but I don't want it to jump back to whatever, I'm not even gonna know what it was because there's no way of really seeing, there's no huge screen to really break it down. So I wanna know what, what the knobs are and I want the knobs to tell me what's going on. So let's get into the machine. I'll show you exactly how to edit that right now. Okay, so here we are with the ME50. Uh, as I said before, the blue light is on when I turn the power on. Now, the way you automatically get it is with the red light, like this, and everything gets all wacky with the sounds. So, let's go ahead and make sure that we edit it properly. And this is the crazy uh, owner's manual, sort of quick startup guide that Boss gives you in this huge map thing. It's basically completely useless. Um, all it tells you to do is basically turn the power on. It's, it's ridiculous. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go online to check it out or just watch this video, I'll go through it with you. Now, in order to change what we were talking about, you're gonna to wanna to go make sure that you're not in uh, preset mode, that you're in manual mode, and then press the edit button right here, okay? So you press that. Now, you're gonna use the bank up and down to change the parameters, okay? So this is output select. So there's a, a, a list of how, you know, what you want, oh, sorry, I just knocked the camera, what you want um, the output to be configured to. So if you're playing directly through an amp, for example, and it's a 212 or 112, there's a suggested thing, mess through, uh, go through the different settings, see what you like the sound of. I'm on three right now, that's fine. So every time you press edit, you go to a different mode. Now this is the NO, we'll call it mode, the knob motion. So all this means when it's NO is that the parameter value changes instantly when you operate the knobs, okay? So when you twist a knob, it'll change instantly. Rather than if it's N1, um, the value only changes once the knob position reaches where it was pre-saved, which I don't want. I don't wanna do that every time and then change the knob. So I keep it to N0. All right, and then I press edit again. Now the L section, um, that's the USB level. All right, I just leave it at nine. I'm not even dealing with that right now. Uh, D1, all right, so the D, uh, that is the USB direct monitor. Again, this is the USB settings. I'm not dealing with that right now. The B, B0 and B1, again, USB loopback. I'm not dealing with that. What we wanna get to really is, so there's the output settings, okay? that when you're using the tuner, I want it to be muted. So that's zero. Um, and what we were talking about is getting all the way to this setting here, this strange pi or almost an N. 
Uh, and that's the issue when you're dealing with automatic presets or manual mode. So here, this is how you have it set if you want to turn it on and, and it's in manual mode. Otherwise, if you go to N1, it's going to go um, to memory mode, okay? And the factory settings carry over. So every time you switch something, even if you're in manual mode, if it starts in the other one, then the, the levels go all over the place. So keep it here. That's the setting that you're looking for to even things out, okay? And to keep it where the knobs actually are. Now you press this again. This is the send and return uh, point where you want it to be in the, the line up of different effects. I'm not dealing with that right now because I'm not dealing with the loop. Uh, zero one, that's when you switch patches, okay? That the delay uh, carries over or there's um, a bleed uh, after you turn the delay off, okay? And you can keep going. Uh, this one talks about uh, the different colors of the LED lights. I, I frankly don't care about that. And then the R setting is foot switch functions. So in manual mode, uh, this turns the reverb on and off for this reverb foot switch function. Uh, and in R1, if you change that there, uh, then what it does is it actually uses the loop and it functions as a switch to turn the loop on and off. That's it. Okay, so really it comes down to, let's put this back. There you go. It comes down to this setting right here. That's what you want if you don't want the levels to go all over the place. And then you can go ahead and set your own uh, presets and parameters the way that you want. Keep it nice and level and balanced. Uh, press right, you're out of there. You're good to go. Uh, one more thing that I want to mention is I actually purchased uh, the Boss Bluetooth adapter. Okay, and I popped it in here. You'll see the little blue light there. I'll typically turn that off when I'm not using it, but there's just a little button, I'll, I'll turn it on. And it's great for practicing. So as I was saying, a big part of why I got this ME90 unit in the first place, if I've been saying ME50, maybe that's just, because <laughs> I'm used to saying ME50, but I'm pretty sure I said ME90 all along. The big part of why I got this in the first place was for a home practice, for learning tunes, for going over different things. All right, so um, it was really important to me to get this Bluetooth function so that I could stream, whether it's play along tracks or certain software, play along software into the device in my earphones and play along with it, set the levels, or for learning tunes, playing late at night not to disturb the family, you know, that type of thing, that's great. Or you can also uh, have the, the tunes play through the amp itself, but I find that invaluable, an invaluable tool. You can see it just goes in here, you put in the little screw, and it's super, super simple to use. So that's just a little tip. Um, it doesn't come with the boss unit, but it's an additional small cost. Uh, definitely worthwhile if you're gonna be using it for what I'm using it for. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope you learned how to sort of manipulate the global settings in the unit the way that you want it. Uh, you can always go online to the boss website, pull up the owner manual and go through it again if this was a little bit too fast for you. If you have any other questions, uh, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks so much for liking the channel, for subscribing. Uh, I look forward to running through all the tones of this unit and all the other boutique stuff that I've got with you in videos to come. If you want any specific requests for videos, Leave them in the comments as well. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you on the next one.